Thank you, Sarah. So I have an interesting story. I, um, Advancement started um, reporting to Student Affairs in 2013-ish, and I went actually to Boston, and I met with Sarah that morning, and she told me the story about how when the Boston Marathon bombing happened, how they all got paged, and they went back to the hospital. They were paged to come into the hospital. We need you here. And she basically ran clear across town because there was no transportation to get there and spent like... I don't know, it seemed like days in surgery without asking any questions or anything. And it was just really touching. And that evening, or later in the day, I went to the Prudential Tower and met Ben and had drinks and appetizers. And I'm like, what do you do, Ben? And I was like, you left tech, and what do you do? And he's like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm doing a postdoc at MIT where I use nanotechnology to do this and cancer research and so on. And I was literally blown away. And I called the president the next day, and I said, Glenn, we talk about preparing students to create the future. These guys are living the future. And it was so inspiring to me. And so when we started thinking about 535, it's like, OK, these guys got to come. So anyway, to introduce Kevin Moran. So Kevin got his experience. At, he got to experience Michigan Tech from a little bit different perspective. On his 22nd birthday while playing hockey with his club hockey team, he got tangled up with another player from the opposing teams, hit the boards hard, and broke not only his leg but his wrist. So this wasn't the first of many life lessons for Kevin, from humble beginnings starting out at FEV Incorporated inside Chrysler to stage two innovations where he worked alongside Manoj Bagarva, the founder of Five Hour Energy to the launch of Dream Machine as an LLC and being recruited to H3D to start their design and manufacturing department. Kevin suggests that he wouldn't have done any of that without the spark that he got from Michigan Tech that helped him to launch a small business, to run it successfully, and jumpstart H3D on some of the most advanced military equipment that there is to climbing Mount Denali. Kevin's philosophy for life is to stop trying to know someone and start becoming someone to know. The rest will fall into place. Kevin Moran. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, before I get started, I would just like to thank all the Michigan Tech alum, faculty, staff, and students that have done an awesome job at making this a special event for us. So thank you very much for taking the time to, to do that. My name is Kevin Moran, as Les introduced. I'm a 2010 graduate of the Mechanical Engineering Program without honors. <laughs> and when I was being asked to do this, I was very excited. I was very thrilled to, to discover and, and figure out what I wanted to talk about. And it, had, it gave me the opportunity to reflect on some of the fun things I've had in my career. I've, I've worked with Manoj Bhargava. I got to work side by side with Tom Lasorda, the ex-CEO of Chrysler. I got to run my own business. I'm doing advanced military technology. But people always came back and they asked me about two different things every time. What was it like to climb Denali? And how did you like Michigan Tech? And when I started digging into those questions and how many times those questions were asked, I realized that Michigan Tech had actually taught me how to climb before I had ever climbed Denali. And I thought more about that, and then it came to an acronym. And that acronym came out to be commitment, learning, innovating, meaningful, and my favorite, being uncomfortable. Commitment. We all share a similar experience. Uh, we all signed on the dotted line. We probably all remember where you were when you said, I'm going to tech. Uh, I, I certainly remember when, when I did that. And all these photos, by the way, are from the actual trip. So this is uh, base camp on Denali. This is at 7,000 feet. That's Denali in the background looming, teasing us, saying you can't climb us or can't climb me. And there's a great quote about commitment. Productivity is never an accident. It is always the result of commitment to excellence, intelligent planning, and focused effort. And when you commit, there's concern. There's unknowns. You weren't sure if this was the right school for you. You weren't sure if you made the right choice. And sometimes that'll boil up. And that'll become, uh, come to head. And, and you just won't really know what you're doing. I didn't really know what I was doing at this point. <laughs> that is the look of somebody that has no clue what he's about to get himself into. That's also me overheating uh, at 50 degrees in my driveway. But with that, it continues. And sometimes 
you're not sure, you want to, you want to pull back. And the, the scariest, one of the scariest moments for me when I went up to climb Denali was actually captured in this photo, and it was photo by accident. For perspective here, that is the height of Denver. That's Denali. And Denali is actually the tallest mountain in the world. Not the highest, it's the tallest. And so if you cut Everest off at its base, Denali is 8,000 feet taller than Everest. And so this was my, oh my God, what did I get myself into moment. Um, and I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to do it. But right after that, I captured this photo, which was from the front of the airplane, and it was one of the most incredible photos I took on the trip. And that's when it really reminded me that it takes commitment of not being certain. You're never going to really know if you made the right call, but you have to do it anyways. And if it weren't for that, I would have never taken this photo. And that leads me to the next point, is learning. You don't just commit and go climb a mountain, right? You gotta, you gotta learn. Uh, this is not out of a Coors Light commercial. <laughs> it should be. I'm actually the climber here on the bottom, uh, going down the ridge. Uh, and there's a great quote we're learning from Colin, Colin Powell. It says, there's no secret to success. It is the result of preparation, hard work, and learning from failure. We've all probably heard this quote. And I have failed a lot. I hit the button I wasn't supposed to hit. Yeah, yeah. There we go. That is a nail gun powered pogo stick. Oop, let's go back. <laughs> what was I thinking? <laughs> you know, your springs, kinetic energy, right? You know, hit it with nail. It seemed like a great idea at the time. It was dangerous. <laughs> I almost snapped my foot off on that. I also failed a lot here. I'm not going to stand up in front of you as a 4.0. I'm not. You guys have enough people ramming good GPAs down your throat. I'm not saying don't get one. I'm not saying don't work your hardest. All right? But school was very difficult for me. Um, and it was, it was uh, hard at times. And, and I actually never went to career fair. Not one time. Because I didn't think I had the GPA. And so what I did know I could do is I could use, and that, in case you're wondering, is a rotating license plate assembly. <laughs> Another brilliant idea that I pursue. <laughs> I'm not going to say my motivation behind that. <laughs> I don't like police, okay? You know. And as I moved through my career, I ended up having, I made a whole bunch of machines. And I had built all these machines, they all connected with the class, and that leads to the next piece. And the founding, the bottom there, is, is the degree that I knew I had to get. All that stood on top of it. And that led to innovating. And innovating on Denali is how the heck do I warm up? I'm frozen, it's minus 40. And in this case, I was trying to dry out my shoes, and it was actually it was a great photo. And the quote here is, Innov the history of innovation is the story of ideas that seemed dumb at the time. Really fitting for me, because I've done a lot of dumb things and thought they were really dumb at the time. Like this gross photo of myself. Uh, this was day eight, stuck at 15,000 feet, and uh, what happens in really cold weather when you're camping outside is uh, you'll get a brick of ice that forms on your pillow every night. And it'll pull a lot of the moisture away from your lips and you'll get chapped lips and they actually start to walk around the inside of your lips. And so you take a uh, chapstick and you pack it like chew. Um, it's really a pleasant experience. Because <laughs> that's what I like. But this idea was called Dumb at the Time too. And this was out of the, uh, the original idea came out of Dr. Zhang. He out of the University of Michigan. And this is what I'm doing now. And I'm going to quickly explain the technology. We make a 3D position sensitive semiconductor out of CZT, cadmium zinc, telluride. And if you consider the really fancy box to be our sensor and the radiation source to the dyslexic, your left, right? Yeah, left, okay. Gamma ray comes into it and interacts. It deposits some energy, bounces like a cue ball, and then deposits its remaining energy in the sensor. And we know where that happened because we're 3D position sensitive. So, using fancy math and a lot of software and a whole bunch of hardware, we can create a ring of probable location. We can also say the isotope. 
The fun part is we can keep getting more and more and more hits. And so as we get more and more and more hits, we can start to subtract what's useful or what's, what's not useful and keep what is. And we end up with what the software sees as this. And it's a location in 4pi of where the isotope is coming from. And when I said I do radiation detection, this is probably what you thought I did. I walk around in a suit and big bubble and I love this photo I found on the internet. The guy's like, where is it? <laughs> We've turned it into this. It's a lot more useful instead of saying, hey, there's an isotope or hey, there's clicks here to you've got cesium-137 in your back pocket. So what about a shipping container? Imagine there's a lot of containers out there. This was called dumb at the time. This wouldn't work. And now we're doing this. Which leads me to my next point, which is meaningful. And this is a photo from 17,000 feet looking down on the 14,000 foot camp. That's actually a camp down there where a bunch of us got backed up. Um, that's where I enjoyed the lovely eight days of sitting in a tent. Uh, and when you sit in a tent and it's really windy, you actually have to wear earplugs because it's inside of like a bass drum. And so you get eight days of sitting inside of a bass drum doing nothing. Uh, it's really exciting. <laughs> technology is only meaningful when it reaches the people. Now, that technology I just talked about had one problem. It hadn't been out of a lab yet, and that's where I came in. So super brains at University of Michigan doing this stuff collided with knuckle-dragging Kevin who likes to build things. And we ended up creating a technology that was truly meaningful. And the best day I had to talk about the technology hap and the meaning of the technology happened in one single day. I was at the University of Maryland proton therapy. And if you've ever had the opportunity to see a proton therapy machine, it is some of the most incredible equipment you've ever seen in your life. If you like machines, if you like equipment of any level, it doesn't have to be medical, go and see the equipment, it'll give you goosebumps. It is absolutely the most impressive stuff I've ever seen. And we had the opportunity to install some of our equipment on this machine. And on that same day, I got in my rental race minivan, shot down to DC, where I met with military brass. And we're gonna repackage the exact same technology and right now we're navigating vehicles through radioactive environments, both with one single purpose, and that's the sanctity of life. Both, all of the equipment is made to save lives. And so I've had many days in my career where you wonder what you're doing, 112 hour weeks. I drained my entire bank account on this company to get it started at one point. Why? Because it had meaning. Which brings me to one of my favorite things, being uncomfortable. For some reason, I thoroughly enjoy discomfort. Um, this is a picture from 16,400 feet, and I had actually, uh, my fingers started to, my body started to tell my fingers that, hey, you don't really need all of them. Um, <laughs> so we're gonna get rid of these three, and we're gonna get rid of these three. Um, and it wasn't severe at the time, but it was bad enough where it was a, a serious situation. And I can tell you, that blood flowing back into your hands was one of the most painful thing I'd ever experienced. Beautiful photo, though. <laughs> The best things in life are often waiting for you at the exit ramp of your comfort zone. And this is one of the most critical things I've become really, really good at. It is being comfortable with discomfort. I've never done a speech like this before and I look really comfortable up here, don't I? That's discomfort on Denali, or leaving your comfort zone on Denali. Trick question, there is no comfort zone on Denali. Um, so every single one of these things I've talked about at one point, I couldn't do. I didn't know how to CNC equipment, I didn't know how to machine things, I didn't have my degree yet. I didn't work with billionaires, I didn't you know, deal with radiation, I didn't, I didn't know how to do any of this stuff. But, by being comfortable with uncomfortable, being comfortable with the discomfort, I collapsed all those into my comfort zone. They all seem pretty normal to me now. And that's when I realized tech had actually taught me how to climb before I stepped on Denali, which was my original point. That I would dedicate myself to commitment, I would learn everything I possibly could about what I committed to. Innovation came naturally based on everything else I had done. I picked this idea, that idea, this idea, and then that came to a new one. It had to be meaningful or I didn't really care to do it. And then there was a point where I was really uncomfortable and that I then had to make a decision to commit to something. It became a loop. And that's how I 
have been able to create my future, and you are more than welcome to do the same. So thank you very much.